Hey, and welcome to my first official um, online class. Uh, so today we're going to be doing, um, I guess, more of a functional strengthening flow. Really good one if you're feeling a little bit stiff in the morning, um, but your focus is more on gaining functional strength um, over uh, passive uh, flexibility. So we're going to get started uh, by lying down, straight down on your mat on the floor, not worrying too much about alignment or what your body's doing at this point. Uh, this is an opportunity to, I guess, check out or check in, depending on where you're coming from. Um, so lying flat on your back, you might prefer to have your knees bent or maybe draped over a bolster, just taking a moment to readjust yourself, readjust your clothes and make sure you're feeling comfortable. And from here, starting to take your attention inward. Maybe noticing what your breath is doing. And noticing what you can do to maybe slow down and deepen your breath. Maybe relaxing the muscles in your belly. Maybe letting go of your shoulders, unclenching your jaw. And as you continue to nurture and nourish this beautiful, uh, slow, deep breath, paying attention to what's going on with your body today, how you're feeling, taking a scan from the top of your head all the way down to your toes, and noticing any points of interest in the body. So that might be noticing um, maybe parts of the body that you're really excited to move and utilize and to strengthen. And also noticing any parts of the body that are maybe a little bit sore, a little bit tired, a little bit vulnerable. And almost like we're doing a stock take. So we know what to uh, be aware of as we move through this practice. So we can adjust our practice accordingly. And from here, let's start to move a little bit with our breath. So using your next inhale, let's bend the right knee and draw that knee into the chest. Now you can grab on underneath the knee, your yoga pants on top of the knee. Just give it a little, little pull in toward the chest. And then placing your hand or hands on top of that knee, start to guide it around in some circles. Starting to draw some circles with your knee. Take them in the other direction as well. And then bringing your hands down either onto your belly, maybe down onto the floor. Let's keep those circles going with the knee. But now we're using the muscles in our leg, the muscles in our hip, the muscles in our belly to keep us nice and stable here as we take this knee around in circles. Now, acknowledge if you'd like to be making really small isolated circles. Acknowledge perhaps if you'd like to be taking some really big exaggerated circles. Just using this opportunity to ask your body what it feels like doing. Ask your body how it's feeling, taking your circles in both directions. And then using your next inhale to bring that knee back through center, give it one last little hug. And then as you breathe out, releasing it back down onto the floor. Let's do the same thing other side. So inhale as you bring left knee into the chest, give it a little hug. Starting to draw some circles with that knee, placing hands on the knee. Guiding it around in circles, both directions. And then releasing hands down to the belly or maybe down to the floor, wherever they feel good, and keeping those circles going. Drawing some really active circles with the knee. Maybe they're big, maybe they're small. They're getting into the hip joint. Making these movements nice and smooth. Then use your next inhale to bring that knee into the chest. Give it a little hug. And exhale as you let it go back down on the floor. Beautiful. 
So if you've got a yoga block, go ahead and grab that. If you don't have one, that's okay. Use a pillow, use a sturdy box, use anything that you can kind of use as resistance, use as feedback between your knees, pop it between your knees. Uh, and then we're going to float the knees up over the hips. Now, as you do this, keep the back of the rib cage pressed down into the mat. Watch that your front ribs aren't really flaring out. Press the back ribs down into the mat. And remember, if you want to make this a little bit less intense, which is the option I'm going to go for today, I'm going to draw the knees a little bit closer in toward my chest. Whereas if you want it to be a little bit stronger, more intense, float the knees back out over the hips. Now, aim of the game here is to keep our entire shoulders, both shoulders, the whole upper back on the floor. You might like to reach the arms out by the sides in a T shape or perhaps in a nice cactus shape, right angle bend at the elbows. And keeping the elbows on the floor as you take an exhale and rocking the knees over to one side. And then use an inhale as you bring them back up. Exhaling over to the other side. And inhaling as you bring it back up. Taking a few more of these with your breath, exhaling it down. Now remember the aim of the game isn't a big twist. It's not getting our knees down to the floor. Inhaling it up exhaling it down. It's challenging our core here. So as we take our knees out to the side, inhaling it back up through center, as we exhaling it out to the side, we're challenging our core to keep us stable, inhaling it back up. Let's do one more, exhaling and inhaling. Beautiful. Let's grab that block, pop it to the side, release the legs down toward the floor. And from there, let's reach the arms directly up towards the ceiling. So our wrists are floating over our shoulders. Again, the whole shoulders, upper back, want to be on the floor here. It's just our arms that are reaching up. Have energy coming out the fingers. So they're not kind of floppy hanging out in space. They're reaching up. This is a deliberate movement. From there, floating the feet up off the floor. Now we want the feet roughly over the hips, give or take. That's asking a lot from our hamstrings, especially if you haven't uh, warmed up, if you've just rolled out of bed. So if you're finding it tricky to keep those legs elevated, bend the knees, take the kind of the stretch out of this posture. Beautiful. So once again, attention to the back ribs, press them down into the mat behind you. See that your, your core, the muscles in your, in your tummy here, are making the effort to keep those back ribs pressed down and to keep the legs elevated. Now let's bring a little bit more challenge into this. As we exhale, let's lower the right leg down and inhale as we pick it back up. Awesome. Let's do the other side, exhaling left leg down and inhaling it back up. Now, continuing on like this, exhaling right leg down. It doesn't matter how far your leg goes down. It's just that you're challenging your core here. Inhaling it up. Exhaling left leg down. Inhaling it up. Let's take one more each side. Exhaling down. And inhaling up. Beautiful. Draw the knees into the chest. Give them a little hug, a little rock around from side to side. Now, you're welcome to maybe roll off into the fetal position, place your hands on the floor and press yourself up to a comfortable seat. Otherwise, you might like to draw the knees into the chest and start to rock backwards and forwards, rocking up and down the spine. You know, treat it as a little massage on the back here until you can rock your way all the way up to the sitting. So you might like to sit with your legs crossed here, Sukhasana, easy pose. If you find that sitting cross-legged uh, it's not working for you, you can take your legs directly out in front. And you might even like to sit up on a, on a folded blanket here just for a little bit of height, a little bit of comfort. So working on what I call a seated cat-cow, let's take the hands either onto the side, uh, thighs or perhaps the knees. And as we inhale, we come from this beautiful sitting up tall, straight spine position, and we roll the shoulders back, roll forward on the sit bones. So that's an anterior uh, tilt in the pelvis and draw the heart forward, maybe even looking up slightly. So think of the skin on the front body is stretching right now. And then as you exhale, we roll back on the sit bones, start to kind of puff out through the back of the heart, looking down, thinking about stretch stretching the skin on the back body. Inhales, we bring everything forward. And exhale as you send it back. 
take one more inhaling as we bring it all forward and exhale as you send it back and then from here, I kind of like to liberate this movement. So rather than bringing the rib cage back and forward, maybe start to take it around in some circles. And so your circles might be more ovals or squares. Again, you might like to make these really big, exaggerated movements. Or you might like to make these smaller, more isolated movements. Taking your circles in the other direction. I really like to focus on my thoracic spine here, my kind of uh, middle upper back area and see if I can get some movement in there because that's generally a place that doesn't like to move as much as the lower back. So ooh, this is one of my favorite things to do. And then when you feel kind of even coming through center and then if you do have your legs crossed, let's just uncross them, cross them over the other way, keeping things nice and even. Beautiful. Now, if you're comfortable to reach your arms directly up over your head, kind of like you're making the Y from the YMCA here, so uh, hands a little wider than the shoulders, go ahead and do that. If you're not feeling like reaching your arms up above your head, uh, you can always take um, fingertips to shoulders. So what we're doing here is challenging our chest to stay nice and open when we lean forward, which we're going to in a moment, and those muscles around the shoulder blade area between the shoulder blades are going to have to work. So taking a really big inhale to sit up nice and tall, and then as you exhale, keeping your upper body exactly as it is as you lean forward, hip hinging, pressing your legs down into the floor, keeping the chest nice and open, spine nice and long. Taking a few breaths here, really thinking about waking up those muscles between the shoulder blades, making them nice and strong. This is a good anti-hunching posture. Use your next inhale, come back up. Exhale, float the arms down. Beautiful. Let's take a few rolls of the shoulders, roll them backwards, roll them forwards, or oh, maybe roll them opposite ways. Beautiful. And from there, let's roll forward onto our hands and knees, setting ourselves up in a nice, stable tabletop. Now, I always tell my students I would never buy a new table that was saggy in the middle. So with your tabletop, just kind of turning on that abdomen area, turning on that core area, so you feel nice and strong and stable. Gently press the hands down into the floor so you feel strong through the chest as well. So now we're here in our nice stable tabletop. We've got our wrists roughly underneath our shoulders, knees roughly underneath our hips. Just picking up one hand and starting to roll that wrist around, roll that hand around. Take your circles in the other direction. And same thing, other side. Picking up your other hand, rolling the wrist around both ways. Flex and extend the wrist. Beautiful, placing it down on the floor. And then you might like to walk your fingertips around in a circle and walk them back. And just warming up the wrists, warming up our hands. All right, coming back to that beautiful stable tabletop. So you can almost imagine here, just like when we were lying down and pressing our back ribs back into the mat, even though we're in a different position now, pressing your back ribs back into that imaginary mat, Ooh, kind of lowering that flare in those lower ribs there. All right, so let's extend out our right leg here, flex the toes, kind of reinforcing through that core area so you feel nice and strong. And then let's lift that heel up so it's in line with the hip here. So this is a hip extension rather than a back extension. So if you feel like the bend is coming from your lower back, think about that core drawer and that lower belly and see if you can get the movement to come from the hip. Beautiful. And then if you're feeling it, take the weight into the right hand as you reach the left hand out directly in front of you. So you feel like you've got a nice long line from your fingertips to your heel. Taking one last big inhale here. And as you exhale, let's bend the elbow, bend the knee, puff the back of the heart out. So you're making kind of an angry cat shape as you draw the elbow in towards the knee. Beautiful, crunching it in and then sending it out with a breath. As you inhale, draw elbow to knee. Exhale, send it out. Last one, let's inhale it in. Exhale it out. 
Beautiful bonus challenge. Let's take our floating arm, floating leg out to the side. Bring it back through center. And set the knee, set the hand back down on the floor. Beautiful. Let's do exactly the same thing on the other side. So extending our left leg out, flex the toes. Kind of reinforce here. Make sure you're feeling nice and strong, like even through the hands. And then if you're feeling it, remember your toes can stay down on the floor. If you're feeling it, float the... Uh, back leg up off the floor movement comes from the hip not the lower back so our core has to work here and maybe we're even waking our glutes up a little placing weight in the left hand let's extend the right hand out so we've got opposite arm opposite leg extended a few breaths here really reaching your fingertips and your back heel in opposite directions back toes point down towards the floor as we next exhale let's bend the knee bend the elbow draw them in through center crunch it in Inhale as we extend out and reach. Exhale as we bring it in. Inhale as we extend it out. Exhale as we bring it in. Exhale as we extend it out. Beautiful and Breathing hand, knee down to the floor. I think I cued an exhale twice there, but I reckon you guys have got it. All right, from here, let's take our uh, big toes together. Take the knees slightly wider than the body and then just pressing back, coming into an extended child's pose or a downward facing hero's pose, Ardha Mukha Varasana. And then from there, keeping the hands nice and active, fingers spread, palms press into the floor. Elbows are floating up off the floor here. So we're thinking about our downward facing dog here. Now remembering any time I cue a downward facing dog, you might like to take a tabletop instead, especially if you're not feeling 100% through the wrists or elbows or shoulders. We're going to practicing our downward facing dog arms here. So from our fingertips to our hips, we're in a down dog right now. Beautiful. And then turning the palms to face inwards, so the pinky finger side of the hand is on the floor here. As we inhale, we're going to keep everything exactly as it is, except we're going to lift up that arm off the floor. Now, if you're keeping your upper body where it is, lower it down. Inhale as you lift it up. If you're keeping the upper body where it is, it's not actually going to come too high off the floor. That's okay. Exhale it down. Inhale, attention to that space between the shoulder blades as you lift up. Exhale to settle it down. Beautiful. Take the other side. Inhale as we lift up. Exhale it down. Inhaling it up. Exhaling it down. Beautiful. Last one. Inhaling it up. Exhaling it down. Beautiful. And then you've got the option here to tap the toes, come up onto hands and knees and press back to your downward facing dog, or perhaps coming back into an active tabletop attention to the core area, to the chest, upper back, that nice strong tabletop. Beautiful. Taking a look between the hands, just kind of crawl our way or step by step make our way. So we're standing our feet behind our wrists. Really big bend in the knees here. Let's come into a ragdoll pose. So our feet are hips distance-ish apart, give or take, as long as you feel steady. You might like to keep your hands on the floor. You might like to grab your elbows. Let your whole upper body hang here. Think like you're decompressing between each and every little vertebrae. Allow the crown of your head to drip down toward the floor. You're welcome to rock from side to side here. You're welcome to be still here. And then if you've got the elbows, letting them go, press down into the feet, find that connection to your core and start to uh, tilt the pelvis under, tuck the pelvis under and roll your way up, vertebrae by vertebrae, stacking on top of each other until you find yourself, head coming up very last in standing. Once you get there, roll the shoulders a few times. I really always feel like a brand new person after I do this and I think I say that every time I teach it in a class, but it's true. Ah, I knew feel like a fan that just unfurled itself. All right, let's work our way through some modified uh, sun salutations. And I say modified because they're just completely untraditional. Uh, now, beginning your Tadasana, so your mountain pose. 
feet hips distance apart, grounding down through the feet, feeling really strong and steady. Channel the mountain when you do this posture. Palms face forward. Maybe a soft smile plays across the face. Feel free to relax the forehead, relax the jaw. And as we inhale, sweeping the arms out and up. So reaching arms up overhead. Remembering if your arms don't feel comfortable reaching up overhead, you might just like to take your arms out to the side. You still get that beautiful feeling of an inhale and an open through the chest. So picking your option with your arms, big inhale, grow nice and tall. Watch those bottom ribs from flaring. And then exhale as you fold all the way forward, hinging at the hips, bending at the knees if you like, Uttanasana, forward fold. As we inhale, place the hands on the shins, coming up halfway. Think about that tabletop back again as you come to Ada Uttanasana, halfway lift. Exhale as you bring the hands down to the floor again, bending the knees as much as you need. And let's take a step back with our right leg. Bringing that right knee down onto the floor behind you. Think about right angles at your front knee, your hips, and your back knee. Supporting underneath that knee with a folded blanket if it feels a bit sensitive on the floor. As we inhale, again, let's reach the hands up overhead. If they're not feeling good overhead, keep them out by the sides, feeling like you're growing up nice and tall. Tucking the hips under slightly, watching those bottom ribs aren't flaring out too much. Press them down into that imaginary mat behind you. Beautiful, maybe finding a feeling of a stretch in that back hip. Bringing the fingertips behind the ears like you're showing off your biceps. Let's take a little lean forward and then twisting across the body like you're pointing your right elbow towards the front of the room, back elbow, your left elbow. <laughs> and a few moments here, lots of weight in that front leg. And inhaling as you come back up through center. Now we're going to pivot on that back shin, opening up our hips and our chest to the opposite wall. Reaching the arms out, palms face down. We're in almost a half Virabhadrasana 2 here, so a half warrior 2. So here, while we've got that back knee on the floor, remember support under it if you need. We can focus on the little nitty gritty details of a warrior 2 that we might kind of let fall by the wayside when we're too busy supporting our own body weight. So watch that you're not rolling to the inner edge of the foot here. Watch that that knee doesn't want to collapse in. Keep that front leg nice and active. Spread the toes. Bring the knee kind of in line with the toes here. See if you can get those glutes to come into play. Beautiful. Arms are nice and long. Nice, strong, determined gaze over that front middle finger. And then as we inhale, let's come back through center. Pivot on that back shin, reaching arms up. Exhale as you bring the hands down to the floor, tucking the back toes, coming high off the knee, pressing back to your downward facing dog, or maybe pressing back to your tabletop or your child's pose, taking two or three nice, really long breaths here. If you are in your downward facing dog, you might like to pedal out the feet, thinking about that nice long line between uh, the heel of your hand and your hips, remembering that you're better off bending the knees and having a nice long spine rather than kinking in the spine and having straight legs. Beautiful, wherever you are, let's take a look between the hands. Coming up onto your hands and knees or stepping from your downward facing dog, stepping the right foot forward this time, lowering that back knee. And once you feel nice and stable, let's reach the arms out and up or maybe just out. Again, finding that tuck under in the hips if you need, nice and long through the spine. Take the back bend out of your lunge here so you can get the benefit of opening up through the front of that, um, that back hip. Beautiful. From there, let's bring the fingertips behind the ears, chest is nice and open, show off your biceps. Let's take a little lean forward and then twisting across the body pointing your right elbow to the back of the room, left elbow to the front of the room. Again, have a play here with see if you can bring that twist into the upper back here. As you inhale, let's come back up through center, reach up and exhale to come to our kind of half warrior two. So pivoting on that back heel, arms reach out nice and long. So our chest and our hips open towards the side wall. You might prefer to be on more of a diagonal, that's okay. 
getting in touch with that front leg, front knee, front foot, toes are spread, the arch of the foot is active, thinking about keeping the knee or keeping the thigh bone running in the same direction as our toes. Maybe having a play with tucking the hips under here, notice if you uh, kind of arch, have an exaggerated arch through the lower back. And then as we inhale, let's come back up through centre. Exhale to place the hands down on the floor, either side of that front foot. Let's tuck the back toes, come up high off the knees. And this time we're going to spring forward off that back foot to come back to our Uttanasana forward fold. And inhaling to reach the arms up overhead as you come through to standing Uddhava Hastasana. Exhaling, hands come down through heart centre. And we find ourselves back in our Tadasana. Beautiful. Taking a moment in your Tadasana to decompress, soften your face. And from here, let's step our left foot directly in front of our right foot. So toes touching heels. If you're feeling really unbalanced here, take the feet a little wider apart. And then again, checking in with your legs, checking in with your core, noticing what you can do to feel balanced here. And when you do feel grounded and balanced, Spread the toes and gently close down the eyes for a few breaths. And if you want to challenge yourself, keep the eyes closed as you do this. If you're feeling a little wobbly today, just blink them open. Let's take the weight into the front foot. Step the back foot in front. So we're doing same thing. Other side. Find your balance. Softly close down the eyes. Kind of trusting yourself to keep yourself balanced. I love noticing all these tiny little movements in our feet and our ankles as we do this. All these little um, proprioceptors and um, I guess reactions that keep us balanced. And these are going on all day, every day, and we don't even notice. It's just something that we can be really grateful about in our bodies. Blinking the eyes open. Let's come back to our Tadasana. Feet hips distance-ish apart. And let's work our way into Vrikshasana or Tree Pose. So taking the weight into the left foot, remembering that your toes don't have to leave the ground here, only if you choose. And you're more than welcome to steady yourself um, next to a wall or a chair. So weight comes into the left foot. Let's come up onto the ball of the right foot. So we've got a bend in that knee and then turning that knee out to the side, we move at the hip joint. Hands are in front of the heart. If you like, you might like to bring that foot up onto the calf or up onto the thigh. You can grab the ankle and bring it up closer to the groin. Thinking about your foot running down your seam on your yoga pants, toes point downwards. Again, check in with your core, how it can help you. Using your glutes to open that hip, draw that knee out to the side, soften your breath, find a focus point in front of you. And to come out, gently bringing that knee through center. Let's challenge ourselves and maybe lift that foot a little higher. Draw the knee towards the chest. And then as we exhale, gently lowering that foot down. Coming back through your Tadasana. As we lean the weight over into the right side. Same thing, other side. Coming up onto the ball of the left foot. Turning knee out to the side. Picking your option, how high or how low you're feeling having your foot today. Finding your drishti, your focus point directly in front of you and grounding down through that standing foot, feeling strong, stable and balanced. And knowing even if you're not feeling like that today, at least you're practicing feeling like that today. That's got such a huge benefit in itself. Bringing that knee through center, having a little play with maybe lifting it a little higher. And exhaling as you gently, slowly set it down on the floor. Beautiful. A little roll, a little wriggle if you need to reset. Let's take the weight back into our left foot. Again, coming up onto the ball of the right foot. This time we're going to take a bend in that standing leg. So depending on how challenging you want this posture to be, um, you, you can make it more by bending that knee more. You can make it less by bending that knee less. Ask your body what it feels like. Again, that... Um, 
right knee might like to, or right foot, sorry, might like to stay on the floor. Otherwise, lifting that knee directly up and almost like you're playing hacky sack, turn it out to the side. So external rotation in the hip. Beautiful. Kind of pointing the heel up towards the ceiling. Taking your arms out into a nice cactus shape. Dancing Shiva. And having a play with bending that standing leg more and less. And as we inhale, let's reach the arms up and out. Take that floating leg and extend it out beside you. Almost like a nice star pose. Take up lots and lots and lots of space here. And then stepping that floating leg behind your standing leg. Let's reach up and grab that right arm and take a bend over to the side. Ooh, side stretch from our wrist to our ankles. Mm, inhale as you bring it up. Exhale as you step back into your Tadasana. Oh, I really love that one. Let's uh, take weight into the right foot. So same thing, other side. Left uh, heel comes up off the ground. Option here to have that foot floating up off the floor and turning it out to the side like you're playing a hacky sack, trying to point that heel up towards the ceiling. External rotation in that hip. Find that perfect depth of the bend in your knee. Taking those arms out. Feeling strong and open. Beautiful. Nice big inhale as you reach up and out. If you want this to be more challenging, lift that leg higher up off the ground. And then floating that leg behind you as you reach up and grab the opposite wrist, taking a bend over, feeling lots of space in the side body here. A breath or two here just to savor the sensation. Inhale as you come back up through center. Exhale, let go of the arm. Step your feet back out. Come back to your Tadasana. We're going to have a little play with Utkatasana. So let's keep our uh, feet hips distance-ish apart. And what I want you to really focus on here is that your ankles and your knees don't rock in and they don't rock out here. They stay like train tracks. Think about your thigh bones like train tracks and your shins all the way from knees to the toes um, are train tracks too. So as we inhale, let's reach the arms up overhead. Remembering if your arms up overhead aren't feeling that good for you, you can keep them down by the sides. And sitting deep, like you're trying to sit in a chair behind you, but someone's pulled it out and you're just a crazy strong yogi that doesn't need a chair. Sitting back in your Ukatasana. Again, notice what your lower back is doing. If you've got a really exaggerated arch, tuck it under. Michael Jackson style. That's one of my favorite cues from my uh, teacher, Radhika. Michael Jackson style. And gazes forward. And then as we exhale, we're going to shoot those arms behind us and take a little lean forward. Chest is nice and open, palms open uh, to the front. Inhale as we rock the weight back into the heels, reaching up again. And optional extra, this time as you exhale, shoot the arms behind you, reaching forward, coming up off the heels, coming up onto the toes. Watching ankles don't rock out to the side here, from tops of the feet to front of the shins, train tracks. Exhale as you send it back. Inhale as you bring it forward. Exhale, send it back. Inhale as you send it forward. Exhale as you send it back. This time as you inhale, reaching up towards the roof, standing up tall. Exhale as you take the arms down by the side, relax. Coming back to your mountain pose, your Tadasana, palms face forward. You might like to close down the eyes here. Feeling really grounded, connected through the feet. And then when you're ready, nice big inhale as you reach the arms up overhead. Exhale as you fold all the way forward, Uttanasana. Inhale for your halfway lift. Exhaling, bringing hands down to the floor. Stepping back either to your tabletop to a low plank or to a high plank. Keeping the elbows in nice and close. 
upper arms almost brush the body as you lower down nice and slow. So if you're in a plank shape, see if you can get your chest, your belly, your thighs to touch the floor all at the same time. And once you're there relaxing down on the floor, we're going to wiggle our hands underneath our shoulders here. And again, thinking about keeping the arch out of your lower back, a little natural arch is completely normal, but we want to be working on our upper body here. So especially that hunch over that we get uh, working at your computer, driving a lot, it's completely normal for all of us. Um, but a nice counter to that kind of 2019 hunching lifestyle um, is to get nice and strong through those upper back muscles so it can help us stand upright. So let's bring the focus back there rather than relying on that beautiful natural bend we get um, from our lumbar spine because it's, it's designed to bend that way. Cool. So our hands are underneath our shoulders. We press the hip bones down toward the floor. Think about almost tucking uh, the hips under slightly. And as you inhale, press your hands down into the floor. Keep the elbows in close as you roll the shoulder blades together and lift up. Exhale as you lower it down. Inhale as you roll it up. Exhale as you lower it down. Inhale as you roll it up. Exhale it down. We're going to take two more like that. If you've got energy to burn, maybe you bring your hands up off the floor as you lift up. Keep them off the floor as you roll down. Our last one, inhaling it up. And exhaling it down. Beautiful. Placing the hands on the floor, let's press back into our Ardu Mukha Varasana, downward facing hero's pose. Arms are still active here. And then from here, uh, pressing up onto our hands and knees. So we're going to do, um, I guess, an alternative to a pigeon pose. You can call it, uh, I've, I've seen it written as anti-pigeon, which is a, a fun way. Um, so coming up onto our hands and knees, we're going to bring our right knee forward and kind of sit back towards your right sit bones. Swing your right shin out in front of you. So you've got kind of a right angle going with that shin in front of you, right angle at the knee. And then same thing with that back leg. So right angle at that back leg. Give or take. If you want less of an angle or more of an angle, that's cool. Work with you. And from here, again, let's take the fingertips either to the shoulders or maybe making that YMCA shape with our... Um, these are called arms. <laughs> with our arms. Nice big inhale if you think about a nice long spine. And then as you exhale, let's lean it forward. Kind of as far as you can go while keeping that beautiful long spine, that beautiful open chest. Press that front leg especially down into the floor. Inhale as you bring it up. Let's do a couple like that. So exhale and inhale. Exhale it forward and inhale. Let's do one more. Beautiful. Lower your arms. All right, so keeping your legs exactly where they are, let's take the attention to that back leg. So you might even turn slightly towards that back leg and bring your hands onto the floor, onto your body, wherever you feel most steady. I'm going to bring mine down onto the floor. Let's flex that back foot. And as we inhale, see if you can lift that heel up off the floor. And you'll see mine doesn't come too high. Yours might not want to come up off the ground. That's totally okay. It's the intention that matters here. So we inhale, we lift. And we exhale, we lower. So this is active internal rotation of the hip. Inhale to lift. Exhale to lower. Such a small movement and such a hard movement. <laughs> inhale, our last one. Let's lift. And exhale to lower. Beautiful. All right, let's swing those legs around in front of us. Same thing, other side. So we've got our left leg in front. Thinking right angles, give or take. I don't mind if you want a little more or a little less of an angle. So my back leg is uh, more 45 degrees. <laughs> That's okay. All right. Once again, let's make those YMCA arms. Sit up nice and tall. And as we exhale, lean forward. Flex that front foot. Press the leg down into the floor. Woo. Inhale it back up. Exhale to lean forward. Watching we're not hunching here. Inhale it up. Exhale it forward. Inhale it up. 
And let's do one extra. I think we did that on the other side. I just really like doing this. Woo! And bring it up. Beautiful. Let's turn slightly with the torso. Attention to that back leg. So if you kind of bring um, your body closer to the floor, leaning down on your elbows, you're going to have a little bit of an easier time lifting it up. Whereas if you're sitting up nice and straight, it's going to be harder. Pick your option. I'm going to lean a little forward for this one. As we inhale, let's press the knee down as you lift the heel up. Exhale to lower. And like I said, inhaling it up. It's the attention here. So not worrying too much if that foot's not wanting to float up too high. It doesn't have to float up too high to get the benefit of this. Let's inhale it up and exhale it down. Whew. Nice. So swinging those legs out in front. Feet on the floor. Nice big bend of the knees. You might like to lean back into the hands as you do this. You might like to be sitting up tall, but just rocking knees from side to side. Beautiful. Then from there, let's take a lie down. So lying straight back. This is a really nice thing to do with a bolster, um, a folded blanket or a pillow. If you've got one, you're welcome to come next to a wall and pop your legs up the wall. But essentially we lie back and stick our legs straight up in the air. So if you don't have a pillow um, or a block or anything handy, you can even just place your hands kind of like thumbs making a diamond shape underneath your sacrum. You're... Um, big wedge of bone at the end of your spine and take the legs up in the air. So just like at the beginning of the session, if you feel like that's really hard on your hamstrings or you feel like your abs have to do heaps of work to keep your legs there, bend the knees. Kind of find that nice floating kind of balance point where your feet can float up in the air without having to uh, use too much effort to keep them there. So if you've got energy to burn, flex the feet, press the heels up towards the ceiling and turn your quads on. Or if you're feeling a little bit more in a restorative mood, you're feeling a little tired, bend the legs, have the feet nice and floppy. Wherever you are, let the whole upper body spread out on the floor, on the mat. Starting to slow down your breath, knowing we're making our way towards the end of the session. Starting to slow, not just your breath, but I guess your rate of thinking. So having our legs up higher than our heart helps with uh, lymphatic flow. Lymph fluid helps with venous return um, of blood back to our torso. So transporting oxygen, transporting nutrients. <laughs> Transporting vital fluids, which we do through moving the muscles in our legs anyway, but it's a really nice thing to do. This is my favorite thing to do at the end of a really long day. And then you're more than welcome to stay here for your Shavasana if you're feeling really comfortable. Otherwise, bringing your legs down, extending them out on the floor. Lying down on your back, you might like something underneath your knees, like a bolster or a pillow. Taking a few moments to rearrange clothes, rearrange body parts to make sure that you feel really comfortable. Spine is nice and long. Traditionally, palms face up. And maybe closing down the eyes, softening the face. And to settle into your Shavasana official, officially, let's take a really big breath in through the nose, as deep as you possibly can. And then when you can't breathe in anymore, open up the mouth and let it all out. <sighs> so let's do that two more times, inhaling as deep as you can in through the nose, sip in a little more air, a little more air, and then open the mouth and sigh it out. <sighs> Inhaling one last time as deep as you can through the nose, using your entire torso, and then open the mouth and slide out. And then from there, just letting go of your control on the breath. I always find comfort in the fact that when I stop consciously breathing like I do in a yoga practice, that my breath will breathe itself. 
Allowing your breath to become passive. Allowing body to become passive. Maybe letting that have influence over your mind in becoming passive. And in the same way that perhaps if we notice ourself clenching a muscle, we simply let it go. Do the same thing with thoughts. So finding that if you can't consciously clear your mind, um, it's completely normal. But rather than engaging in a thought and giving it your energy, you can acknowledge it and let it pass. Allowing yourself this time to practice and cultivate peace within. Knowing that all of the beautiful beneficial things you've just done for yourself over the last 45 minutes, they are sinking in. It's almost like a system update, doing a good shavasana. And if you're enjoying your Shavasana, you might like it to last a little bit longer. You can feel free to keep going. Otherwise, if you want to finish up with me starting to come back to your breath, taking some more deliberate breaths in and out. And as you start to wake up your breath, kind of feeling as if with each breath in, you're breathing in new energy, new prana, starting to breathe a little bit of life and movement back into your body, maybe beginning with hands and feet, letting that move up to wrists and ankles, arms and legs. As your breath becomes deeper, allow your movement to become bigger and more exaggerated until eventually you might like to take a big stretch, arms up over the head, maybe drawing knees to chest, whatever feels good. And then rolling over to your preferred side into the fetal position for a moment. And then pressing yourself up into a comfortable seated position as long as you can sit up nice and tall. Let's bring the hands in front of the heart, gently bowing the head, taking a moment to thank yourself for taking the time to practice yoga today, to move your body and to practice being mindful. And then just envisioning in your mind's eye the first thing that pops up when I say the word gratitude. And it's super cliche, but I think it's really um, powerful to practice gratitude. So thinking of a person or an opportunity, a cute dog you saw, whatever. And I want you to send that thing lots of love and light and thank you. And then as you're sending that out into the world, I want you to take a little bit of that feeling and send it in towards yourself. Thanking yourself for taking the time to take care of you. And thank you so, so much for uh, joining me for this first practice. Um, hopefully our next ones will be a little bit easier for me. <laughs> um, yeah, you have a gorgeous morning, day, evening. I really appreciate you spending this time with me. Um, now that you've got this beautiful, good yoga feeling, go out into the world and pass it on. Um, have a beautiful, beautiful whatever you're doing and wherever you are. <laughs> Bye.